Hello and welcome back. Um, today we're going to continue to work on simplifying the Docker setup and I think today we're going to implement actually um, the first time setup, right? The thing where you can log in and stuff. I also now have a new nice chat window which looks way nicer and now I have like more space when I program. I just have to keep in mind that I don't see stuff up there. All right, so the issue that we currently have is that we have to set like three three variables um, in the environment vari uh, environment file, like <coughs> the username, the user password, and the admin email. And I think that we don't need that, right? So the idea is that on first time setup that you get a nice web page, like similar how we currently already have it. Um, when you just sign up as a second or third user. And yeah, that should make uh, the whole application actually more safe because <laughs> most people are very lazy and if they have like a default value, they just keep the default value. So I wouldn't be surprised if like there are some systems out there that just have like admin admin as a username and password, which is not great, not great. All right, um, it should be started up now. All right. The, that's currently our first time setup. We already lo are locked in. And the general idea is that if we go to here and then say allow user registration and go to logout, right, then we have this sign up page. And we basically want that, but um, yeah, we, we basically want that. And that's it, I think. All right, so I think we can start implementing that now. Um, in order for that to work, uh, we have to first remove a command. So if we go to Docker, right, an entry point, sh, then we have our create admin thing and we don't want that anymore, right? So let's remove that. Save. Okay, cool. And now I obviously need a new server. So um, these whole username, user pass, um, and admin email are now not used any longer. Mm. Right, so um, I want to create a new database, 14, save. All right, let's go to our Docker folder and then start it up with the sudo docker compose and our, our very long command, um, yeah. All right, so let's go to um, close others. Right. Let's go to our front end and let's check out the login page. So here we go, we have login page and we have sign up page. Oh. I think we need a new page, right? And we will call that first time setup or something like that. So let's copy that first time setup page. Very cool. Okay, and 
most of the stuff is similar, but the header is different, right? So first time setup. Save that. Okay, so let's go to the locales and then English and then translation. And here sh we should have like a login, right? Login. Here we go. First time setup. Here we go. First time setup, first time setup, awesome. Don't need that. Okay. We should also implement a new route for that. So let's go to app.js. And we have here these things. Okay, first time setup. Okay, he can't find that, but that's fine. I just have to find that. Uh, login, and then we have sign up page. Here we go. First time setup page. And it is compiling. First time setup page not found. Why? But I already have this here. All right, so I have to rename that obviously. First time setup page. Here we go. So that looks good. It's complaining a lot about like, ah, yeah, any. We use a lot of any's and not specific types, which can be an issue. So right, so we have now our thing. We can log in with admin admin, right? It doesn't work. So the first thing that we want is that we don't, if we don't have a user in the backend, then we get sent to first time setup, right? And that's something like this. Okay, it looks very broken. Um, yeah, that's interesting. So the issue is that we just remove these, these things if we're on the sign up page or the login page. So we have to implement that also for the first time setup page. And if I remember right, we all we do this in here. Right, here we go. No menu bar paths, right, and slash login. No. Um <clears throat> Maybe I missed something. Let's go to login containers. Okay, so th that's our container and then we route back to the login page. So maybe that's the reason why we don't see it, I don't know yet. So we'll just look for login. Mm -hmm. So 
So if that's like specific to the container, then we should also see this when we have like uh, our uh, sign up, right? No, here it works fine. And it's interesting that we can just see that, but anyway. Okay, first time setup. Hmm. Very interesting. <laughs> All right, translation, environment, explorer. Okay. It has, there has to be like some kind of check. Um, no menu bar paths, right. Oh, here we go. Like, why didn't I see that? I, <laughs> I knew that I, uh, that I had implemented that, but I didn't know where. All right, so let's compile. First time setup, a hey, and it looks good, somewhat, right? So it's every everything is like a bit much down, but uh, that's fine. So that's the first time setup. Cool. And here we have like which API do we use? Uh, I don't know yet. But I will take a short break. I will be back in a second.
All right, I'm back. So let's continue. We now have our first time setup page, which is a bit weirdly formatted. No, it's the same as the sign up page. Okay. So I wanted to look up which action we use, and we use the sign up action. All right, let's go to definition. And um, right, we already have updated that. <coughs> so, right, um, most of the stuff is similar to before, but we want to also like be able to add an admin. So let's look at the Uh, let's grab some more coffee. All right, so let's look at the endpoint. No, I don't want to stop. Um, the endpoint is obviously in own photos URLs, which is here. Here we go. Slash user. Here we go. So, and that's in obviously user view. Okay. Is registration allowed, right? Okay, what else do we have? We have like, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then probably in the user serializer we, yeah. Go to definition, yeah. So here we have all the other stuff. Here we go, create and make sure username is always lowercase. I don't know, that seems like a stretch, but whatever. Um, right, and then user create user. So we have in like our management engine um, the create admin command. And um, the only difference is that we call another function, like that we create a super user. And that's pretty much it. Um, so let's go to models and then to user. Get admin user, right, get deleted user. So that's probably like a default command. I don't think that we have to worry that much about it, too much about it. So the thing is, do we want to like um, create a new endpoint for that or do we don't want to do that? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. <coughs> okay, so let's check out permission classes first. <coughs> Because a super user is a user, right? And um, all right, so we want to check if we can permission denied custom permissions. Here we go. So has permission, right? OK. 
Okay, so we can just create a new one. That's cool. So user view set, here we go. I think I will just put that up here. And um, yeah, not customer access permissions and then first time setup permission, right? Uh, permission is not defined, okay. So let's import that from REST framework. Um, like that, right? Okay, so, right. That's not really what we wanted to check. Um, so we have to return a boolean, I guess. <coughs> right? Yeah. Okay, so what we want to do is user um, get objects, right? Dot and then get a uh, super user. Okay. Clear cache, build similarity index, save metadata scan. Um, I think that was on the model, right? Now that's a serializer. Model, here we go. Yeah, get admin user. All right, I will just use that, whatever. And uh, so if we get one, then it's obviously false. No, then it's true, right? So I have to do that, not, all right. And that's basically our first time setup. So permission classes, right? So get permissions create. Um, so now I have to check out if this, that's an AND or an OR, right? Permission classes. General permission checks based on the current action, request and target object. Object level permission can only be applied to retrieve, modify and delete actions. Permission check for lists and create will be applied to the entire object. Okay. Um, I think I will just ask the stupid question to Stack Overflow. So yes, those are acting as an end condition. Also, how should I interpret bitwise or on the permission like that? So the time you default list behavior is the same as end. Okay, so we do an or. Right, or if one of these are, is like true, here we go, save. All right, and then we're allowed to do that. That's great. And so let's go to user.py, but to the serializer and
because we have to change a couple of things, I guess. <coughs> Create. No. Okay, we just use the validated data. But we don't add all these things, right? So let's go to um, user action, right? So that's a neutral action. It's an auth action. It's an auth action, all right. We only post email, username, password, scan directory, first name and last name. All right, username, email, first name, password, and last name, right? Last name, here we go. Yes. Do we have maybe like two calls to that? No. No, okay. All right, so my general idea would be that we have like a flag and then I will do if admin or something like that in validated data keys. All right. And I'm pretty sure that I have to add this here. Okay, so. <coughs> let's go to not user pi. Where did I add this? In views, right? Ah, and he closed it again, like, okay. So, is super user. Is super user, right? So, that's what we have to set. And if he is super user, then we do a user dot objects. We do that, right? And else we do this very cool safe um, so now we only have to change um, that you can also set or at least that should be the only thing um, that you can set in auth actions, auth actions, auth actions, auth actions, docker, front end, no, um, uh, 
that you can set. Um, also, is super user boolean, right? Okay. Here we go. And he is still complaining, and that's a warning, all right. But it should have compiled. Um, all right, so let's go to first time setup page. And then he complains about that. True. True. Here we go, save. And on the sign up page, we set a false value. Okay. Very cool. So let's check this out. Let's go to first time setup. Admin. Sign up. Okay, cannot import name permissions from REST work framework permissions. Interesting. All right. <coughs> so let's go to user. And then we have to fix the permission thing. REST framework permissions. Very cool. Import. Okay. And let's copy and paste that and put this here. Save. Okay. And now it should have reloaded everything. I kind of don't see that. No. I don't know. Okay, now we get a new issue. Cannot import permissions. And then the last thing is operand holder object is not tradable. Oh, what? <coughs> Okay, so maybe I have to do different brackets. Okay, let's do that. Save. Worker is reloading. And let's click again. User matching query does not exist. Yeah, that's kind of the point, man. All right. Uh, yeah. Django query check if exist. Okay, so let's do a filter instead is super user and then 
and dot exists. Save. Okay. So let's try this again. Sign up. Okay, 201. That sounds good. And if I now admin admin. No, I used a different password. Now it works. Awesome. So I have definitely implemented that now. <coughs> All right. So the biggest issue we currently have is that we don't get like redirected, um, which we should obviously do if we go to login page. But other than that, that works. So that's great. So we can also try like boot forcing it, first time setup. Admin two. Sign up. You don't have to the permission to perform this action. So that works just fine. All right. Very, very cool. So we now only have to redirect and I think that then this is done. Um, so let's check this out. We need in our login container, right, a login page, but uh, the login container, here we go, where we redirect based on if we authenticated or not. Um, we also need like a second thing um, where we just check if an admin user actually exists. So do we already have an action where we could get that? Fetch user self details, no. Fetch job list, set site settings, fetch, fetch, us fetch user list. <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I think that could work, right? Fetch user list. So, Import fetch user list from not user list but from util actions, right? Util actions. Save. Um, all right. I have to also check out if this is even possible if you're not logged in. <coughs> oh, all right. Um, I wanted to check out where I can find this. Find and files, fetch user list. Here we go. We have here this props fetch user list. Okay. And it's in curly brackets. Cool. So, no, I want to go here. All right. The thing is that I don't have a dispatch here, so that's not great. Um, save. So I could check if I have like 
a dispatch. I think I can use a use effect for that. Right. Use effect. Like that. Okay. I don't know if you have actually a dispatch um, thing. Admin page. This dot props dot. Okay. Props dot dispatch. I mean, it is connected to to the store, I guess. So it should work. Um. Yeah. Let's see. Login. Okay, it just crashes, so I think <laughs> that doesn't work. <clears throat> okay, so do I get any error? Props.dispatch is not a function. Well, well, well. So that doesn't work. But it's definitely function login page, right? Use at dispatch. Yeah, right, I could just do that. Okay. Save. Does it reload? Used app dispatch. <laughs> ah, why does the auto import that not work? Uh, here we go. Fail to compile. Okay, that's in a different folder, so the container and where's hooks. Okay. Here we go. Okay, so now it works, which is good. Um, yeah, so let's start up a new database and then let's work on the redirection. Save. Let's kill them. That was that's way faster than I thought it would be, right? So <coughs> it's also nice because um, we can extend that by a lot of new fields and stuff and like just make the whole experience way nicer when you set it up the first time. I mean, it works for now, and I think I will not um, blow up like the requirements for now, but like in the future, I can just change everything. And uh, it's way less hacky than everything else. All right. Okay. All right, so it loads. Um, I don't see any issue with the user thing and the results are null, right? So I now only have to go to login and then I say, okay, please const not is authenticated, but um, 
where does it save it? Fetch user list. Okay, that's our action. Find and files. <coughs> Case. Uh, that is in oh, usual reducer and then user list. Uh, app.js sign up page login where's the, the login thing here we go state dot util right and then user list <coughs> All right. Um, I wanted to check out in the util store how it's called reduces util user list right okay if the list dot length else no not really I want okay I think I can do that and that is go <sighs> like that right okay very cool so let's see if this works. Okay. Here we go. Awesome. Hey, Vinet. Awesome that you check out my stream. All right. So that works. And I think we don't even need an extra route for that. Um, I think I can remove that because we just um, rendered the first time setup page instead. So I don't need the first time setup thing. I do Django too. Interested work you are doing with this project? Yeah, um, there there's a lot of stuff to to do. Like if you want to also work on it, you definitely can. Like um, we <laughs> there's also like a lot of refactoring work, and I I think I also don't adhere to the best practices um, because I usually just implement like one feature after another. And then you don't have too much time to work on refactoring stuff. All right, so I removed that endpoint. And um, yeah, let's create a user. Sign up. Does it work? Uh, 
I don't see our action. Okay, let's click on that again. Authentication credentials were not provided. What? Okay. Do I have to reload now? Okay, that doesn't work yet. <coughs> um, I'm not sure if I actually created a user or not. Authentication credentials were not provided. That's weird, you know, because you shouldn't need like credentials and I didn't need them before. Um, let's check this out. Um, yeah. I only get that back. I try to set this. Hmm. So we definitely also have like a user now. So why isn't he redirecting me? Let's go to login.js. If user list length is larger than zero. Okay, so I guess let's lock that. Uh, yeah, not like that. Console. Dot lock. All right. Undefined, okay. Classic issue. I think I have to do the other, like that thing. Right, saved. Yeah, here we go, okay. Okay, that works again. Awesome, so now I only have to check if the, um, if the page changes, but it should, right? Um, yeah, let's check this out. Let's shut down the containers again. I definitely need a better workflow for <laughs> testing stuff because like booting up a new container every time I want to create like an empty database is like, yeah, it takes pretty uh, too much time, I think. All right, here we go, and let's try this again. So the issue I currently have is that you always get redirected to the first time setup if uh, the backend isn't working, which isn't the right thing, I think. Um, I think I will check for zero and then render the first time setup page and otherwise I will always show the admin thing. So even if it's undefined that we always see like the login page. All right, so let's try this again. Sign up. Okay, that worked. The, the issue that we currently have is that the page doesn't reload. Yeah. Um, right. 
So let's go to first time setup. So we have our sign up action here. And that's fine. But I will also do a dispatch and fetch everything again. Login JS. First time, here we go. So cannot find fetch user list and the bracket is missing. So all right. Okay, he already imported that. Okay, so now we should it's not assignable to any action. What is happening? Ah, oh, that issue. Oh. Right. Argument of type dispatch any void is not assignable to any action. Ignore. Add tiers, ignore. All right. So that's an issue with the type checking. It works, but it doesn't like the conversion. All right. So now I also wanted to check the other thing. Sign up page, user login. So if it equals zero, then we do that. Otherwise, we do the other thing. Whoop. Okay, so that still works. Yes. All right, so let's try it again with a new container. Ooh. Where's the env file? Here we go. And um, 17. Okay, false recreate. Come on, here we go. Nice. So that works. Um, all right, so it's undefined, but he still goes in here. Mm. I mean, it works if we. Hmm. 
Yeah, I would want the login page as a default, to be honest. App.js. Um, I think we can fix this. I only have to set like a default value when we load that. Um, and I think I have to make here like a strict check. Compiling. Uh, I use Arch Linux um, and Manjaro because Manjaro is like really user friendly. All right, come on. Why, it's undefined, like, how is that true? Type of array, okay. How? Oh, so, okay, so it's actually an empty array. I'm checking for something that doesn't exist. Yeah. Uh, so how do I uh, check if the backend has started up or not? Uh, okay. I don't think I need that any longer. I just have to read my console logs. Um, do I have an error class or something? Error equals null. All right. So I could check for that. Error no error and save so that should work i think i can remove this empty <laughs> console statement console.log errors Yes, I don't need that. Okay, that was confusing. So, right. Well, how do I test that admin? Okay, so creating the super user worked, I guess, but it doesn't refresh. Why? Ah, because I dispatched it <coughs> right right after that, and then it doesn't reload. Yeah. 
the classic, the classic. Um, right, so let's put the dispatch thing somewhere else, save. Let's put it in Util Reducers and then, no, in Util Actions. Where is it? Here we go. And then if it's fulfilled, then get the user list. Uh, yeah, no, don't do it. <laughs> Don't fetch to the user list after you fetch the user list. That's a bad idea. Uh, sign up. Where is sign up? Oh, that's an auth, I think. Yeah. Here we go. Import fetch user lists okay safe ah okay add tiers ignore all right so if I now reload yeah, it still renders the, f the, other, the one thing first. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I think I have to live with that, that we have like this short thing. Um, not ideal, but I don't want to get hung up on that. Um, so I only want to check like one last time if the redirection works. And then I think, um, that feature is done then i can refactor the other stuff like the data paths for log location pro media cache deer and db location that we only have like a data folder because i always use it as a data folder yeah i think db location would be nice you can also set this and that you can set these values in general but like most users don't care um, how it's called so save and start up <coughs> I could do a manual, I could add a state, right? If it already fetched something or not. <coughs> um, and then I don't have this issue. Here we go. Okay, so. <coughs> Th this works now. Um, now I only have to 
remove this flickering. Right. Um, okay, so let's add a state. So const and then fetching set fetching false. So true. Can I do it then? I think so. Okay, so let's check this out. Reload. And it crashed. Oh, finally, he doesn't like finally. Uh, fun. No. Cannot read properties of any kind. Ah. <coughs> So I can't really set anything like that. Uh, do I have an, I think I have to define that in the Redux store instead. Okay. Util, do I have a definition? Good definition. Okay. Uh, reducer. Util. Okay, so we have like sometimes some fetching things. Do I have this for user? Yes, fetching user list. Okay, that was easier than I thought it would be. I don't need that, and I don't need that. All right. Cool. So that works now. Or maybe I just use fetched user thing uh, like that. That's more, that's easier to read. And I don't think I need the error because he only sets this if it, if it worked. <coughs> All right. Save. All right. Five. That works. Ah, wrong password. All right. <coughs> Last test, and I think then I can push it. So, new database. Stopping the container.
Come on. All right. And restart. Okay, so reload. <coughs> yep, and then he loads it. Awesome. Let's sign up. We're here again, and then I can log in. Very cool. So that works. So let's commit our stuff. Fish and then first the changes to the back end. So we only did like small changes. Um, some formatting. All right. Stage. Stage. Um, git commit. Uh, one file reformatted. All right. Go. Okay. Um. Super user SN for user. <coughs> okay. Then the next thing would be entry point, right? So Libra Photos Docker and here I'm just going to, I don't know if I actually want to remove that. So maybe it's useful if you want to set them. Um, right. So <coughs> let's add this back. Whoop. Save. But now I want to have like an if right. No. Um, if I don't know if um, So then do a phi. Cool. I don't know if shell has like truthy or falsy values. So truthy dash
in Unix land zero is true and one is false. Oh, okay. Bash is so <laughs> ugly. <laughs> uh, usually the right way, where var plus x is a parameter expansion which evaluates if to nothing if var is unset and substitute the string with x otherwise. Okay. often the wrong way to check for none now you can do that minus n Bash is so weird. Okay. Right, and then admin username. Well, I think we can assume if we set admin username that the rest is also there. <coughs> Do I have to set an else? <coughs> Dash if then else. <coughs> okay, I can do. <coughs> I can do if then and then phi. Okay, cool. So let's save this. I guess I have to check this now. Ugh. Okay, twenty save. All right, so I hope it's working again. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure. All right, uh, it's still there. Very good. Uh, yeah, I lost, I guess, a bit of, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know why it crashed. The internet is some, sometimes a bit weird. Okay, but it works, so that's good. Um, So let's try if our bash command works or not. Okay, so let's check this out. Reload. And it looks like it works. Yeah, very cool. So now I have also to check the other path, I think. So if I remove these, does it still work? Come on.
Okay, so let's reload. Yeah, okay, it still works, awesome. Very cool, then I can push that. <laughs> Stage changes, git commit, um, only create admin if values are provided, awesome, okay. push and then I can also do the same for the backend okay and now we are going to to the front end awesome Stage changes, it commit. At first time set up. Very cool. So let's push that too. Okay, let's pull something, then push something. Okay, so I think the last thing I could do is remove um, the values, right? So to docker and then we go to env and we don't need these any longer save remove optional values all right I think I'm now done very cool so these changes will be available like in a couple of hours Yeah, and then you can, you don't need uh, these three values any longer. Nice. All right, so I got a couple of notifications. Let's check it out. It's just the linting error, okay. And last time the um, Docker the, the, the docker actions didn't start up and I don't know what's the issue with that okay so that definitely worked which is good so thumbs up for that all right very cool um, yeah so I think I'm done for today if you like this video please leave a like if you found a bug leave a comment you can also sponsor me on GitHub Sponsors, which helps me out a lot. And uh, see you next time. Bye.